Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm a little bit disappointed because the four cylinder model with the white steel wheels will no longer be offered. I received a phone call the other day telling me that if I paid more money for the six cylinder, they could honor my build. I asked, does it come with the steel wheels? They said no, so I promptly asked for my deposit back. And this is no fault to Land Rover of Glencove. They've always offered me cars to test drive on a regular basis. My issue is really with Jaguar Land Rover and the Tata Auto Group for changing course without warning. This is for many reasons. For every 10 110s that they build, there's only 190 rolling off the production line. And now with the introduction of the 130, the company's changing course because I guess there's a supply and demand thing. There's not a lot of people requesting the 90. I was one of the people who was requesting the 90 because I, I just think the car looks better. It doesn't have all the trunk space in the world, but I don't really care. So I think that's my frustration that they couldn't honor my build at the original price that I requested for the four cylinder. It's like, look, you guys change course, but at least honor, you know, keep your word. You're going to build the car, you know, honor my deposit. Let's do, let's do everything moving forward. Unfortunately, they could not do that. You know, I've driven the 110. It's a four door vehicle with a lot more space. I was fortunate enough to drive it in Manchester, Vermont. Great vehicle. I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with the vehicle immediately. And I was given information that the 90 was going to arrive soon, but, you know, due to the chip shortage and the production consistencies um, and all the delays in the production, everything just sort of went its own separate course. My motivation to try to pursue this car just slowly dwindled as the months were passing, as the weeks were passing. And I was like, wait, uh, you know, do I really want this car still? I knew I wanted the 90 because if production numbers were low, I knew it was going to be a classic one day. But then I was like, you know what? Maybe it's not worth it if I have to wait this long for a car, especially in the configuration that I that I requested the car in. With all these false alarms, you know, it just it made me lose interest really fast. But the car was amazing. The final straw was when I saw that the 130 was being produced and I still hadn't gotten a timeline for when the 90 was going to be built. Honestly, you know, I looked at the 90 and I was like, all right, the 90 is great. The 110 is cool. The 130 looks more like a school bus. What I loved about the 90 was the distinctive silhouette and the short wheelbase because the intention was to off-road it. Short wheelbase just increases off-road capability. I had ordered mine in a Spartan state of mind, meaning cloth upholstery, white roof, white steelies, Tasman blue paint, which I think is still very attractive, and a full digital gauge cluster. The main screen was only offered with the small configuration and not the full-size configuration due to some manufacturing delays for the 22 and the 23 model year, which should have been a red flag, but nonetheless, I continued with my order. And several months later, there's still no car, which means I'm likely going to keep my placeholder C300 Mercedes. I've grown to love the Mercedes because it's a regular car that does no wrong. It always works. It gets the job done, even though it's admittedly basic. One of my good friends who I'll feature on the channel in the near future had told me it's like the Louis Vuitton bag. It's affordable, yet it's approachable luxury. Because in reality, the C300 is not quite the enthusiast car. But the same can be said about the diesel cars from the 80s with Mercedes, like the W123. Those were taxis, but they've grown into becoming this, uh, this applauded enthusiast vehicle. The C300 was a placeholder. So the idea was to keep it between, you know, selling the Porsche Cayenne with the six speed manual and deciding on the next car, which in my mind was going to be the Defender 90. The whole idea was I couldn't use the Porsche 911 as a daily driver and park it on the street. So the C300 served the perfect purpose. And for now it's been great. And I plan on keeping the car because it's a really good car. It's actually very reliable. So leave it in the comments below. I had my heart set on the Defender 90 with the steel wheels and all the perfect options. I had, I had the perfect build sheet with the perfect specs and perfect everything. Which enthusiast daily do you think I should choose next since the D90 seems to be out of the question and I am adamant that I will not pay a dollar over sticker because these dealerships get enough money and all these car companies get enough money and maybe the time is not right. Like, do I just hold on to my placeholder? and go into a holding phase, or do I look for a daily that's gonna be um, enthusiast uh, driven? 
So leave it in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Peace.